Welcome to Oscar Sunday. I'm Austin Johnson. I'm Connor Izagiri. And today we're talking about the fucking fighter. <laughs> uh, t- 2010 film here, nominated uh, seven times at the 83rd Academy Awards. Got two wins, uh, Mr. Christian Bale for Best Supporting Actor and Mrs. Uh, Melissa Leo for Best Supporting Actress. This is a, a performer's showcase, the fighter. And, you know, it seems to be a, a theme for David O. Russell films. Uh, he's, his new film is out now, Amsterdam, starring Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, John David Washington. Bunch of fucking people are in that movie. It's getting panned, completely ev- eviscerated across the board. Nobody seems to like this movie. Uh, and Car and I decided to pass on it because you got to choose wisely these days. There's things that come out all the time. Every goddamn weekend, you can find something on streaming or movie theaters and you got to choose wisely with what you do with your time and your money. And we both, we both passed on Amsterdam one day. I'm sure we'll see it, you know, comes out on some fucking Hulu or HBO max and we'll check it out. But for now we're going to pass, but I do think it's a good opportunity to talk about David Russell, talk about Christian Bale, talk about the partnership they've had. You got, you know, of course the fighter in 2010, uh, they worked together again in 2013 for American Hustle. Uh, and, you know, then we have this this film here. Um, you know, he David Russell's a guy I don't really care for. Uh, the Fighter is by far, by miles and miles and miles, my favorite movie of his. Uh, I, I just don't really care too much about Silver Linings and, and uh, Silver Linings Playbook and American Hustle and Joy. And now here's Amsterdam. I just don't really care that much about that catalog. Uh I think he gets performers to do really, really amazing stuff, but the stories and some of the direction is just not for me. I'm with you. I, I, I often wonder why he's allowed to continue working considering the rep he's got and the difficulty he has with some people and that video of him just losing his fucking mind on Lily Tomlin. (laughs) Yeah. Fucker. Uh, Yeah. I haven't seen anything pre his, uh, his boost with 2010 like anything before like three Kings or I heart Huckabees. I haven't seen any of that shit. I, three Kings is fine. I think you dig that one. Uh, I heart Huckabees. I've only seen once. It was a long time ago. Uh, again, really cool cast, but I don't really remember too much of it, but he just like after the fighter, like he was the guy. I don't know what happened, but like everyone wanted to work with him. He was getting a nomination every fucking year. And you know, then it just kind of fizzled out. And now I feel like Amsterdam popped the bubble. Uh, mm, but we'll mm. see. I mean, you know, sometimes these negative reviewed films do make it into the Oscars. You know, look at like, you know, Dr. Doolittle or Stringly Loud and Incredibly Close. Like it happens. Mm. So I wonder if the, this will even phase the Academy. I guess we'll see. But um, I love The Fighter. Silver Linings Playbook. I like it because my family really likes it. We tend to watch it around Thanksgiving and my family like really has a love affair for that movie. And I enjoy it. I think it's cute. I think it's it makes me laugh. I love his crazy ass therapist who's like, "Go birds." And yeah. That's great. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> the American, eagle stuff is great. Yeah. Yeah. My family <laughs> fucking loves the Eagles. Like you know, we've got yeah. we've got some some a lot of family in Philadelphia. My grandma's from Philly, so like Eagles. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, American Hustle just gets worse with each viewing. It's such a cliche fest of just every you know every con man movie ever made just like put in a blender and this comes out and that's yeah. like I, you know with a fat christian bale I, I expect a lot more yeah yeah i remember when i saw that i saw that movie in theaters and i was like this is Damn. amazing I was like, this is perfect yeah and then and then i watched it again like at home a few years later and i was like, this is pretty bad like it's really <laughs> ill-conceived a, a, a waste of a lot of a lot of really really cool people you know from from Bale to, of course, Amy Adams. And, uh, you know, uh, I really like, you know, Jeremy Renner. Like that could have been, that could have been a really cool role. Uh, yeah. There's, there's all kinds of people in that movie. And I just wonder what it is about David O. Russell that people are like, I want to go back. Like Christian Bale's like, I want to do three movies with this guy. Like after joy and Amsterdam, like it's not critical acclaim. It's not, I don't think it's, you know, screenwriting talent. I don't, I don't really understand the, the, the appeal. I, yeah, he's, I don't know. He's like the RC Cola of filmmakers. It's like, you know, he's palatable, but I'd rather have something else. Yeah. If it's there. Sure. I yeah. guess, I guess this I'll throw it. This is all I got. I mean, I guess I'll, I guess I'll do it. 
yeah, I'm okay with it. I have nothing against RC Cola, but I'm not going to choose it over Pepsi or Coke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, he just, <laughs> I don't know. I, I've never really gotten it, especially like, how does he keep dragging Robert De Niro into his projects? Ah, that's one. It's there's got to be a, and you know, like his 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 actors, they get to perform, they get to really do do stuff and do different accents and dress really cool. You know, like American Hustle has has cool costume design and all all that stuff. And like you get to you get to act, you get to kind of go go out there and do crazy stuff. I, I just. I don't know. I'm just I'm just not that impressed, I guess. Overall, if you look at all those movies stacked together, it's like compared to some of his, you know, his peers over the past couple decades, just I don't know. He's not he's not the cream of the crop. Not at all. No, he's he's the hair floating in the soup. Yeah. Yeah. Well put. <laughs> I, li- I like that. But but the fighter, like he does have this this movie, right? Um I think the fighter could be could be like an absolute classic in someone else's hands. I think he did fine with it. Like I give it an eight out of ten because I, I love what Bale's doing. I love what Melissa Leo's doing. I think it's Mark Wahlberg's second best performance behind Boogie Nights, like of his whole career. Uh, I, I love all the supporting, you know, supporting uh, actors and actresses are, are great. You know, Amy Adams is awesome. The, all the ladies who play the sisters, they're amazing. Like everybody does a great job. There's just little decisions that come that come from the director that we'll get into as we talk about, you know, our awards for the fighter and as we get into the 83rd Academy Awards uh, a little later on. I, I just I'm like, why'd you do that? You know, like, why was that the, the, the road you took? Um, and, I, and I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I like this story. I like, you know, the story of Mickey Ward and Dickie Eklund. You're like, this is a cool cool little thing you know in, in Lowell Massachusetts you know like good Boston story um, I find it funny that we've done two movies from 2010 and it's the town and the fighter I was thinking exactly <laughs> the same thing like that was you know the year of fucking Southie yeah Charleston and, and <laughs> Lowell the pride of Lowell <laughs> so funny I just think that's great there you know we got the King speech and the social network and we're like nah the town and the fighter <laughs> So we'll, we'll be breaking the Boston accents out yet again uh, for, for this episode. So brace yourselves. Um, now, Christian Bale, let's talk about him. Let's talk about what? One of the, one of the five best guys of this generation? Like, where, do you, where is he at with, for you? Like, you know, he's in his 40s. Maybe he's 50 by, by now. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up. But uh, just your general thoughts on Bale and like what he's accomplished over the past, you know, 25 years. Few actors have the range that this guy does. Like it's mm. really incredible. Um, I remember when um, when Batman Begins came out and he started doing press junkets. People were blown away to find out he was British. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Um, he's you know what he does to his body is amazing. The the weight how he how fast he's able to drop it and then get it back for roll after roll after roll. He destroyed his body, and it's gonna have major repercussions in his later years which is a damn shame but his dedication to performance is unrivaled like it's really incredible i mean you know when he uh when he did vice he uh he had just seen darkest hour and he called gary oldman and was like how did you gain all that weight and still you know come out on top and oldman's like that was a suit and yeah. i was like what you can do that like that fat suits look good now I bet he was kind of upset. I like to picture him taking that phone call, like with the Cheney weight being like, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. But, but knowing that, mm-hmm. I, I mean, vice vice is greater than darkest hour for me, like based off that performance. Cause it's like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, one, one guy went to the studio or, you know, went to the, went to the lot and was like, I'm going to go into my, my fucking trailer and I'm going to get my fat suit on. Christian Bale was like, I'm going to eat a lot. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. that's that there's, there's something, something about that. And then, and then immediately a year later, Ford versus Ferrari, he's Ken miles and he weighs like 140 pounds. That's the, that's the craziest thing. It's like, there's no two or three year gap between these projects. It's like no. less than a year. Yeah. And he's gaining and losing all this weight. And also, you know, the things he can do with his voice, he, mm. He's a performer. He is a chameleon and he is an incredible actor. And I'm, I'm just, he's one of my favorite 
performers working today. I'm always oh, yeah. excited to see what he's going to do next, which is why I was, you know, especially bummed about Amsterdam because it was, you know, he was what I was looking forward to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, he's incredible. And I'm glad we're kind of using this opportunity to shine a spotlight on him. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, he's going to be turning 49 in January. His birthday is a day before mine. How about that? Uh, <laughs> b- born, born in Wales. Yeah. He's a, he's a, a Welshman through and through. And I, I mean, <laughs> you look at you look at all the all the movies he's been in. I mean, half of them, half of his like best performances are, are him playing an American, and he has mastered that accent. Whether it be you know Northeast or kind of like a you know you talk about like Three Tinny Yuma, where he's doing kind of a you know a different different thing with it. Uh, obviously, obviously the fighter he's do, he's really going for it with the accent as Dicky. Well, with the fighter, like my mom pointed this out, he's not just doing like a Southie accent. He's doing a crackhead Southie accent. Like he's yeah, talking yeah. Like, a, like he's got, you know, serious drug problems. Yeah, he's like fucking, so that feels like, like, feels like you're fucking floating. Yeah. Like it's fucking <laughs> yeah. great. That layer of performance he adds to that and you just buy it. You believe this guy with, you know, his gauntness and the way he help, holds himself, the look in his eyes. Like this dude's been to yeah. the ringer. Yeah. Bruce Wayne. Fucking, he plays Bruce Wayne. You know, he's Batman, right? For three three movies that were yeah. so they're so iconic. Speaking of, the fighter is in between the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises, so he lost yeah. the Batman bulk and then got it back for the Dark Knight Rises. Like, Jesus, man. Yeah, who is this guy? <laughs> who is this guy? Uh, yeah, he's he he meshes like our worlds so well too. He he does a lot of like wacky weird shit. And you know, you know, you know his his early career. He there's going to be some there's going to be a movie I'm definitely going to talk about uh, here in a little bit. And, and then he he's able to do the Batman stuff, and he he's in he's in Thor, the new Thor, and he it's like he does you know all, all these different things for, for for like the fans, for the people, for himself. And he's also an Oscar nominated Oscar winner. He's just kind of the best of all the worlds of of acting. Like he he gets the respect from the from the suits, but he also it's the respect from people who are like, good God, no one can do that like him. Well, I especially love that he doesn't like treat, you know, roles like Batman or Gore, the God butcher with disdain. Like these mm. aren't just, you know, to, you know, buy a new car. Like he, he, he values those performances as much as he does a performance like the fighter that wins him an Oscar. I just yep. watched him do a uh, talk with GQ about his iconic characters. I love that series. Oh and, Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bale was talking about Batman, and he said like he has no problem knowing that that is the role that people will associate him with for the rest of his life, and he's just very proud of those films, and especially The Dark Knight. And he talked about Heath Ledger, and it was just it's very cool to see him just kind of reflect, you know, because after the whole Terminator thing, a lot of people just branded him as an asshole. Yeah, and I I I did too, but since then I've backed away from that, and really kind of I think he's he's grown up a lot since then, and. I think, I think he's, he seems like a decent guy. Yeah, yeah, he seems seems like he'd be a fun hang. That's for sure. Like he'd be fun. He'd be fun to just like have a few beers with and talk about whatever. You know, um, I love that quote where he's like, "Everything that I've done is because Leonardo DiCaprio passed up on it." <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the it, it's like funny, but it's also when you like break it down, it's like how how humble can you get for a guy to just be like. I, I wouldn't be here without the guy who's like the best of my generation. Cause Leo, I believe Leo is just a couple years younger than, than Christian Bale. You know, they've, they've come up at the same time. They're part of the same generation. And Leo is like the goat of that, that generation. I love Leo, but if I'm going off straight up talent, I'm taking Christian Bale. I'm taking, I'm taking the dude who does lose the weight and gain the weight, do all the different accents, play, play Batman, but also be able to play Dickie. I'm taking that guy. I'm taking the guy who pleases everybody. He does genre movies. He does superhero movies. He does movies that nobody fucking sees. You know, like he he does everything. Those are my favorite people. And I I yeah I, I've always been been a massive fan. So being able to do a top five Christian Bale performances with you is going to be quite a treat. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I I put a lot of thought into this, and I'm I'm very happy with what I've got. And I'm very excited to see what you've got. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm really curious because uh, I don't know. I, 
this could change like tomorrow, you know, my, my order and like my five, uh, you and I always talk about when we do these performance ones, it's like, not, it's not so much about what are your five favorite movies that he's been in, but what your five favorite roles, like the, the, the shift that Christian Bale put in for that movie, like what's your favorites. And so I feel like we got to have at least a couple overlaps, but I don't know. You never, he's got, he's got a lot of credits at this point. Uh, but I do think we both have a, like a couple that we're, we're just really, really into. Uh, but there's some stuff I left out that was like, Jesus, that on anybody else's list, it'd be number one. You know what I mean? Like he's that kind of a guy. His, his worst work is better than some people's best work. And that, that's like the, the sign of a true star. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it is incredible. And he's been in the industry since he was like eight, which yeah. is pretty remarkable. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, his, his performance in Empire of the Sun from 1987 is like, are you fucking kidding me? Like that, you know, that's, that's kind of when you, I'm sure people who saw that at the time, they knew uh, look, that, that, that kid could do something really special and fucking here we are. <laughs> yeah. He's got one of the most creative and exciting resumes of any performer working today. And yeah, this is going to have every genre on the map is going to be represented uh, here for the most part. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I went all over the fucking place. So I am yeah, super excited. And, and what's cool is over the next 20 years, these could all go away and he could add five more. You know, he's that, he's that kind of a dude. He's pro he's prolific. He's in a, at least like a movie a year, you know um, he only took kind of like a hiatus over, during COVID. He wasn't, he wasn't in anything in 2020 and 2021. Aside from that, for the past 25 years, like he's oh, fuck it, 30 years, really. He's like always in something. And that's, I, I, I love guys like that. I love guys that work constantly. Um, I, I, I respect it, you know, the, the craft, like always sharpening your, your, your tools. So let's get, let's get down to it, man. Um, you know, we, we got, we both have five here. We'll, we'll start with your five and go back and forth and have some fun. I figured the best place to start for a top five is the role that pretty much got him in the door and made people start paying attention and that is mr patrick bateman from american psycho yes okay this is yeah. uh <laughs> <laughs> it's wild i love that bale said the his preparation for this was basically like watching tom cruise just yeah. act, like be himself and he noticed a weird darkness behind those eyes and he turned that into patrick bateman like what the fuck genius uh, yeah, and it's just such a twisted, weird, psychological, disturbing film that just gets better with each watch. Yeah. And, you know, Christian Bale plays the ultimate Wall Street just bastard, just this, you know, holier-than-thou, obsessed with, you know, business cards, like just, you know, fucking hookers and killing these people he hates with a very shiny axe. It's a great performance, and with that movie, you're like, oh, this guy's going to be here for a while. <laughs> Like this, this is a neat performance. I hate this guy. I can't stop laughing at him because it's just wild, outlandish stuff. Who talks that much about Huey Lewis? Yeah, oh, <laughs> so good. It's so yeah, good. It's a great movie. I, it's been a minute since I watched it, uh, but I I do like it a lot, and I I want to do it again. I think it'd be be a great film gasm. I'm just waiting for the right moment, really. Okay. Well, I want to be on that. Um, <laughs> I'll talk about that movie later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Big, big, big fan. Um, you know, Christian Bale, um, speak about, you know, the, 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 you got the fighter. He wins the Oscar for that. Then he's nominated for American hustle, big short and vice. It's two David O. Russell's two Adam McKay's it doesn't do him justice. Um, and there's movies I, I alluded to, like there's movies that he's done that nobody sees. And my number five is a movie that I feel like I don't know anyone who's ever watched this movie partly because of like the timing of it partly because of who directed it because it's a very hit or miss guy for most people and that is night of cups from 2015 directed by terrence malick uh this man you know this is this is a, a critically uh just destroyed movie people are like fuck this movie i don't understand what's going on you know it makes no sense for me, the first time I watched it, I, I kind of thought the same thing. I was just like, I'm lost. And uh, of course, now as I've gotten older, I've, 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 I've gained a serious appreciation for Terrence Malick. He's one of my favorite, favorite guys that just kind of does the, 
you know, to fuck the narrative type thing. Let's just let's just make a movie and see where it goes. And this movie, it, the cast is what drew me to it. You know, initially it's like, okay, well, you got Malik, but you got Bale, Kate Blanchett, Natalie Portman, Antonio Banderas is in it. You know, it's it's a crazy cool cast. And that's another guy like David o. Russell, where it's like, how does he keep these people just like coming back and lining up to be in his movies? You know, um, but I get it. I this this is up my alley. And I'm not going to sit here and say you have to watch Night of Cups. But if you're a Bale fan, he's done nothing ever like this movie. He's never been in a movie this patient and with the camera on him where it's almost uncomfortable because you're like, whoa, whoa. Well, why, why is the camera so unrelenting in its, in, its, in its view and scope of Christian Bale? It's almost like got this weird gaze on him. And I've never seen Bale in anything like that because Bale is always always acting his ass off he's always like wah, 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 wah. you know he's always that guy in the movie who's like firecracker you know or a villain in night of cops it's like way different role than i've ever seen i had to include it because it's far different than the other four movies that i have represented again i'm not saying you should go out and watch night of cops like if you're just you know just some guy <laughs> But if you are a Bale fan, I do think it can add to your appreciation of him and what he's capable of, because he's capable of literally doing anything. And Light of Cups is proof of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember hearing about this and thinking it'll be a cold day in hell. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, man. Maybe I know... I'm, we're gonna we're gonna get Malik on this show at some point. I know we are. Eh, maybe and not. I don't know. I, don't know I know. I know you. I know you. It's gonna happen. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But I, I'm just not a fan. I I don't like that stream of consciousness style filmmaking. I I need something to ground me before yeah. I can just you know. I, I can't do a spacewalk untethered. I need to be connected to the shuttle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I totally, I totally understand that. It, it is, it is not for, especially night of cups. It's not like you're watching, you know, one of his more acclaimed, you know, yeah. days, you're not watching days of heaven, you know, from the seventies, which is like, Hey, it's a really good, that's a really good story or the badlands, you know, like this is like 2015 Terrence Malick, like being like, fuck you. I don't care. I'm going to, be weird well this is also a malik film that the critics hated so already yes. i'm like if they didn't care for it and i already don't like his filmmaking style this is going to be tough a, a hard <laughs> like evening so yeah yeah that's hilarious <laughs> i actually kind of want caleb and i to do that on on beyond the bad Oh yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all, yeah. Uh, Caleb definitely wouldn't like it, um, and you, you, you wouldn't like it, but you'd be like, ah, oh, Bale was good, you know. Uh, I'd have the <laughs> opportunity to skewer Malik in my own way, and I feel like that would be cathartic for me. So I don't know, maybe. I I'd, I'd probably skip that episode as far as listening goes. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> no, I know. I don't. I, I, I Malik is, you know, yeah, he's um, he's an acquired an acquired taste. Uh, the same way. You know, we all have we all have our, our quirks as movie yeah. fans, and uh, he's one of mine. He's one of my one of my guys, and I'm definitely I'm definitely one of those people. It's like, well, if I see something like Badlands or or Days of Heaven from his early, you know, from the '70s, it's like, well, I know he's capable of telling like a coherent story and making you know making a movie that anybody could like. It makes me it makes me uh, more willing to watch things that are just like this is what i've always wanted to do i feel like i feel like david lynch went through a little bit of that you know with the, you know with, with his with his career um where at some point he was like i just don't care and just don't care like what anybody thinks i like when someone gets to a place like that artistically whether i like it or not or respect it or not i i think it's cool i think it's like a cool place to be it can backfire but it is cool i get that I get that. Yeah. The kind of, you know, fuck the system approach to filmmaking is, is oh, neat. It, yeah. Like, I don't care. I'm not going to make any money. Like the movie's not going to be this, you know, Oh, well, like my favorite filmmaker of all time is PTA. He's like, I, I know I'm going to lose money as far as like box office. He's like, but what I will gain in the long run is far greater. 
you know, and I like when someone gets to that place. Obviously, it takes a it takes a boogie nights to get there, you know, but it's a cool place to be. I'm uh, I'm sure that's I'm sure that's pretty freeing as a as like a creative person to just be like I, it doesn't matter anymore. I that name is like all that uh, that's all it's all I need is written and directed by you know that's that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, that's a good point. Uh, I still don't fucking get Tree of Life, but you know, I all I'm, I love that you do. So that's oh uh, yeah, I, I adore that movie for so many different reasons. You know, uh, that's yeah, that's for a different different day. You know, that's that's a lot of Texan Texan stuff in that one for sure. Uh, and and Chastain and Brad Pitt. You know, just a wolf. I'll watch them. I'll watch them sit at a dinner table for nine hours. You know. <laughs> Well, I'm going to a completely different place for my number four. Here we uh, go. A film that's come up a few times on this show, uh, just hankering for a fantastic episode in the future. Uh, Bale's performance as Dale, uh, Dan Evans, 2007's 310 to Yuma. That's my number four, too. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Love this yeah. movie. Oh, this movie's fucking gold. Uh, you know, Bale versus Crow. You know, it's... A man's life hangs in the balance. Dan is just this simple farmer, you know, veteran trying to do right by his family. Gets recruited to help send outlaw Ben Wade to the train that's going to take him to the gallows. And he's determined to see this through because that's just the kind of man he is. You know, he's he's got a mission. He's going to do it. He's got to teach his son, you know, what a what a man does. And along the way, you know, the outlaw kind of picks up some of his mannerisms and his life lessons and he starts rethinking his life and he's like you know maybe there is more to life than just robbing stagecoaches and killing folk and it's, it's such a cool like back and forth you never see that kind of story in a western where the good guy makes the bad guy kind of rethink his life mm, yeah yeah and yeah seeing those two together christian bale and russell crowe at their like peak is so amazing uh, and you know, with the supporting cast as well, and you know, a psycho Ben Foster is like the true bad guy. Oh, dude, Ben Foster is so underused and so underappreciated by the general public. He really is. He's a character actor's character actor who just doesn't get his due. No, and this is one of my favorite performances. It is. It's uh, you know, coupled with like Marco Beltrami's incredible score and. It's just a great watch. It's the it's, it was my introduction to the Western genre, and I never looked back. And it's still one of my favorites. Yeah, same here. You know, I I was fortunate enough to watch this this movie with my dad at a pretty young age, uh, soon after it came out. And I, you know, as a twelve year old, this movie came out in two thousand seven. Two thousand seven is one of my favorite movie years. Period. Uh, th- w- when I saw the poster, because it's got it's literally got Bale with the gun and Russell Crowe with the gun. And then, you know, 310 of Yuma in the middle in, in red writing. In my head, as a 12 year old, I was like, oh, it's Batman versus Maximus Decimus Meridius. You know, like <laughs> I, I got I have to see that a Western with these two, you know, the glad, gladiator and Batman going at it. I, I got to see that movie. And, you know, you get older and you're like, man, that's like. That stuff like that stuff matters when you're a kid and you're like, look up to these guys and then and then it opens up all these 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 gates you know you got you got this movie's helmed by james mangle super underrated uh i love that bale would come back around to him in ford versus ferrari as ken miles a a movie i almost chose for my list um love what he's doing there i feel like james mangle understands what to get out of bale you know like he bale always like it's very rare that he doesn't go back to a director. So he always kind of does two, maybe three, you know, he's like, I, I, he, he works with the same guy, same, same person. And I, I love that. I love that about, about Bale. Uh, he's, he's lights out 310 to Yuma. And that is definitely a movie I would love to cover on this show. Cause it was nominated twice um, at that, that famous 80th Academy Awards. Uh for for it was up for sound mixing and and uh, original score, um, so nothing like you know, nothing like Bale or, or Crow or director or whatever. But I do think it like has a has a seat at the table with the best of the best in two thousand seven. And you know we're talking Zodiac, No Country for Old Men, There Will Be Blood. Like it, it has a seat at the table. Might not be the best, but it gets to hang out. Gets to buy a beer. <laughs> yeah, 
it's yeah, and you know, Bale's performance in this is very much just like you got to do what you got to do, and yeah, he's broken. You know, he's 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 wounded from the war. He's he's at. You can tell he's at the end of a phase in his life, and he doesn't know how far that's going to go. But he knows that this is one last opportunity to do something right. And I just, I how do you not relate to that? How do you not relate to someone who's just like everything has gone wrong thus far, but maybe this won't. Yeah. Have you seen Hostels? I am not. I really want to. That's a good, that's a good, also, he's like trying to do the right thing. It's like, a, that's a good double feature right there. Kind of, kind of like these two outliers in the Western genre from the, from the 21st century that are like, those are actually good. And like they'll last, like they have the, they have the, like the, the legs to, to keep going for the next, you know, 50 to a hundred years in the, the Western genre. And we don't have a lot of those this century. We just, we just don't. Yeah, the Western is such a, an odd bit of genre. You know, it's, it's, it was like the cheapest way to, you know, showcase sets and talent back in the 20th century. But then, like, I guess Unforgiven was really like, the, the you know, the nail in the coffin for the Western. Yep. But, you know, people have been trying. And you get the odd 310 to Yuma or Hostels or Bone Tomahawk or, you know. But yeah. It's, it's hard to stand out because, you know, everything's been done to death. Yeah, I think now the, like, the smarter route is to do a no country for old men where it's like kind of western neo-noir kind of like all these different genres intertwined uh not not just straight up gunslingers you know yeah bring the western tropes into a modern setting and you can really get creative with that and yeah no country and like very you know chinatown films like that definitely not chinatown it's more noir but uh yeah i had another film in mind i don't know why i said chinatown I mean, I mean, shit. There will be blood. Has 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 some of that going for it, you know. As far as its its setting of of you know West Texas and California, like certain areas, the desert areas of yeah. of our country, and you got you got just egos going at it, you know. And I mean, you could argue like you know, a film like Logan, like you know, grabs those tropes in in spades and just really has fun with them. And another James Mangold movie, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. I that guy's the James Mangold. Yeah, that guy's the fucking man. Yeah, he's. He's one of those like, uh, you know, if you're if you're listening to to a movie podcast, you're probably like, yeah, I'm a big Mangold fan too. But I think most people who just go to the movies don't really know who he is. And there's like the tier of, you know, the Finchers and the Tarantinos and those guys. And then there's like, I think I think a little bit below is like Mangold is somewhere right below that as far as like what people know. But shit, he's put together a really cool filmography and. And, and has these like stamp type movies that I, I just, I'll always remember like when I first saw them, they're always an experience. And, and I, I love that about him. I love that he kind of throws himself into, into these movies, you know, like that's, that's what you want from a director. Yeah. And we're going to see him, you know, take on Indiana Jones next year or 2024, oh whenever that's coming out. But for, you know, for Spielberg to handpick that guy, you know, that he brought a vision that is people are just going to adore. I think he would be my first pick, even if he wasn't, you know, um, there's just, I, I don't know who else. I mean, this is, that's, you know, you're, you're t- you're getting into dangerous territory when you take over Indiana Jones. That's some special stuff. Those three eighties movies are very special to a lot of people. And you, you gotta be like very, very, very careful uh, who you choose to kind of take the helm. I, I don't know. I don't know how many guys could actually pull it off the right way. I feel like he's going to get it. I feel like he's going to understand the, the vision. And so, yeah, super excited. Uh, it's my favorite thing about these top fives is, you know, you just start branching to all these different things we love about movies and go from Bale to Russell Crowe to James Mangold. <laughs> my favorite thing about this show is that in like 120 something episodes, we have never had a fully singular focused conversation. Oh, never. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like Dickie. I'm fucking floating. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what's your number three? <laughs> my number three is Dickie Eklund, the fighter. Okay, that's my number two. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I told, Here we go. I totally get why he won this award. Like, this is a incredible performance. It really like takes everything Bale is good at and pours it into one movie. And he's just such a you know a tragic character. He's the guy who who lost his you know opportunity. He never got the shot at the title fight. Still thinks he's hot shit because that's all he's ever had. <laughs> the only thing he's got to hold on to he's not proud of anything else not even his kid who he 
he calls a little dick, which is just sad. Yeah. Um, like, why would you do that to a child? <laughs> a little boy. Oh, I felt so bad for him. <laughs> well, yeah, I, you know, watching him go from crackhead to, you know, getting clean and admitting that, you know, my time is over. It's my job now to support my brother and make sure he has his time. And coming to that like realization that, you know, I'm not the most important person in this situation. It's, it's cool. Cause you know, you don't always get that in these kinds of movies, you know, boxing movies are pretty similar. They're all, they all kind of follow the same trajectory, but you need little character moments like that to make your film stand out. Like nothing's beaten Rocky. Let's all accept that. Uh, uh, raging bull. Ooh. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the Rocky camp. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm team raging, raging bull, both boxing movies. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there's there's some others, but yeah, I mean Rocky's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's some great ones, but like you know, top of the pyramid, it's it's Rocky and Raging Bull constantly punching each other off. Uh, yeah, like the fighter, like it's just not even close to those as far as like straight up boxing movies. Just no way. What, what's what's great about this is is the performances and is the the, the crack stuff, the the drug, the the addiction stuff, and the family stuff. Yeah, that's. Uh, the, the boxing's good. Like, the action's good. I mean, like, Creed is way better. The actual, like, boxing action and, like, something like Creed is a more more modern boxing movie is, like, way better to me. But the the, the kind of the, the things surrounding the boxing movie, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a drama. It's a family drama, really, at its, at its, at its heart. And, and Bale. <laughs> Fucking, oh my God. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever choose this movie as its own episode if it wasn't for him. Yeah. He he single-handedly raises this movie to be a must-see. Everyone's good. Melissa Leo is borderline great. But Christian Bale is like batting a thousand percent the whole movie from the very beginning when he's on the couch shaking his legs to the end when he, you know, he fucking hands the cake over to all the other addicts and he just keeps keeps walking and the way the way he looks at Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg's like Jesus Christ! I've never seen anything like this. You know, you can just tell in time that Bale was changing who Mark Wahlberg was as a performer. <laughs> just fucking amazing! Like he he's lights out. And and when I you know I saw that I I remember seeing this in theaters still to this day. I remember going with my dad and my dad like on the way home I was, he was like well what'd you think you know and i was like that like christian bale is like scary scary good and he was like yeah i know he's like he's he's one of the best right now and we're still having that conversation 12 years later it's true you know he he brings something to this movie that elevates it to a insane level because he really does pour everything into that like the family drama it's it's such a great example of just you know toxicity that you can't escape because it, you know it's your mother and your brother. How do you just cut them out of your life? I, you know, it's hard to do that. And you know, he does. He also does want what's best for his brother. He really is a good brother. He's just so blinded by his own failure the whole time until he fucking wakes up at that final fight. It's it's a great character journey that you just get invested in. You know, you're way more invested in you know Dickie's story than you really are in Mickey. And that's no fault of the writer. That's really just you know Mark Wahlberg. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. I'm I'm glad Bale has an has a, has a statue for this. It was uh well deserved for sure. And will be you know he he had some some competition there with Jeremy Renner the the, the dog in in the town. Uh, we'll definitely talk about that later. Look at that category. But yeah, he I, I just don't see anybody beating him that particular year. He's 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 lights out. So it's it's my number two. It is in no way one of my five favorite movies he's ever been in. Yeah. But he makes the movie. He like truly, truly brought it. And, and yeah, I got his first nomination and statue. So pretty cool. Yeah. Love that. All right. So that's your number three, my number two. Um, so, so we'll go to my number three. Okay. Um, ah, man, we might have more than I thought in common here uh, on, the, on this list. We already have. We both have three Tina Yuma and we both have the fighter. Uh, my number three is the prestige. <laughs> oh, yeah. all right. You don't have that? Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was, we, we have almost the same fucking list. Uh, God, the prestige is 
now you're talking about underrated. I feel like I've said that word a lot, but God damn, that's a good movie. Talk about, talk about a movie that should have been up for, you know, it's my favorite Christopher Nolan movie by, by, a, by good ways. I, I really like Memento. Um, I, Dark Knights, you know, is quality. Bat Begins is quality. Inception, Interstellar. Man, I've always been really, really fascinated by, by The Prestige. This would be a really, really cool Oscar, Oscar Sunday episode. It was up for cinematography and art direction. That just doesn't, doesn't do it justice. I mean, give Bale, give Jackman both the nomination, right? Give this movie best uh, up for best director for Christopher Nolan and give it a best picture nomination. I, I've, I've rewatched this movie more than The Departed from 2006, you know? It's, it's, it's just something that every time you forget the big twist and turns that it has, how, how awesome they are and how they, how they unfold, you know? It's just such br- brilliant filmmaking. Uh, that's not something I always say about Christopher Nolan, you know? But Bale, Jesus Christ, Christian Bale in this movie is something to behold. Alfred Borden, I've, I, I never, I, this is another one where I feel like it's way different than anything else he's done, you know, playing this kind of a character. I love the mystery behind him, you know, and I would love to see him kind of do something like this again. I think that'd be really special. Yeah. The, what does he say? The secret is nothing. The trick you use it for is everything. Correct. Yeah. Oh God. Love that. Oh, I have a lot to say about the prestige, and I will get to that later. Abracadabra. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. The secret impresses no one. The trick you use it for is everything. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so fucking cool. Yeah, every line of that movie means something else and comes up again and in a different context visually. And that is that movie should have won screenplay. That is one of the most well written films I've ever seen. Yeah, I really like that movie. We definitely got to bring that to 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 this show at some point. I think it'd be really cool to. I haven't seen it in a little while. It's like it's been probably a year or so, maybe longer. And but it, it's up here, you know. It's like it's just kind of ingrained. Uh, there, there. I, I used to have a roommate. It was his favorite movie of all time, like period. And so we watched it. We watched it a lot. You know, we'd get drunk and be like, "Let's watch the Prestige," you know. <laughs> and and, and that, that was cool. You know, I. Um, that was that was like the thing that him and I had in common, you know. Was 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 the prestige, <laughs> you know. Like, the other movies that he liked, I wasn't really on board with, you know. Like we didn't get along, you know. He didn't like horror, so like I, I, I we just like didn't see eye to eye. But in prestige, we were like, yep, <laughs> this is what we're doing tonight, Friday night, baby. Let's get some fucking Budweiser and watch the prestige. Only takes one movie. Only takes one movie to make a uh-huh. lifelong connection, and that's that's special. That's that's what I love about art. You know, uh, me me too. Art me too. is responsible for every friendship I I value. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. It's always that 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 glue that you can yeah. always fall you can always fall back on it no matter what happens. No matter, you know. There's. Uh, I was talking to a friend today. I was like, you know, it. I was I was telling them if because they're going through something, you know, you know, going in their own life. And it's like, if you want to talk about that, we can talk about that. Or we can just bullshit because sometimes people need that too. And sometimes the bullshitting is a way to remember that people do care about you and people will meet you where they're at, where you're at. And that's, that's a true friend. That's someone who like really cares, you know? And I, I, I think like, and so we ended up talking about music, you know, it's like, well, yeah, cause that's the thing we have in common. That's like how we started becoming friends and I know for you and I, it's always been, we can lean so heavily on this, on, I mean, not just the prestige, but obviously, <laughs> obviously a fuck ton of movies. We always have it to lean back on no matter what's going on. And that's, that's cool. Yeah, it is. I value that very much. Uh, so that's your number three. Yes. Okay. In that case, I know what your number one is. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I've known it for 15 years of my life. <laughs> well, I guess that, so uh, next up is my number two. Correct. My number two and my number one, I struggled with big time because I, I hold these performances on pretty equal footing, but it ultimately went to my preference of film. Okay. So number two is Dick Cheney in Vice. I was wondering when Vice was coming up. Yeah. yeah. In that, um, iconic characters video that Bale did for GQ. 
He talked about how he ended up getting the role of Dick Cheney. Adam McKay called him up, you know, shortly after the big short and was like, I'm making a movie about Dick Cheney and I want you. And Bale was like, what? <laughs> how does that are make sense? Sure? Like, are you sure? <laughs> yeah. He was like, that, me as Cheney, like, are you serious? So even Bale was like, can I, can I do this? Like he doubted himself. And then he gained, mm. you know, gained the weight, went into makeup, found the voice. And I don't see Christian Bale in one second of this movie. All I see is this yeah. nothing but dick. Yeah. <laughs> and it is, it is glorious. This is such an underrated film. It didn't get a lot of like people, you know, a lot of fan attention. It got some major uh, Oscar attention, but got kind of mixed reviews and didn't really do that hot. But Bale's performance, holy shit, man. It is yeah, yeah. unbelievably transformative. It's just like, I don't, I don't know how he did that. How do you just become Dick Cheney? <laughs> I, I like, I, I, I don't know. And, Man, I mean that him losing him and Bradley Cooper, Stars Born, losing to Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody is like one of the all time snubs, one of the the biggest what the fucks of my life with the Oscars. Just like what are you like? Did you did you did you watch? You know, did you watch these movies? Well, you're like, yeah, they're nominated, but okay, well, you got the nomination right, you know, like that's there. How do you line up these two next to each other? Like, how do you watch these movies back to back, Vice and Bohemian Rhapsody, and be like, "Yeah, we're gonna go with the guy who like didn't sing over the over the guy over over Bradley Cooper who did sing and learn how to play guitar, and Bre- and, and and Christian Bale who changed his entire body, his entire dialect, everything that he everything that he knows is completely different in this movie." And the dude's from Wales, like, <laughs> and he's playing one of the most evil fuckers we've had in the past 100 years uh, in our, our country's history that's been been in office making decisions in dick cheney the movie is pretty good but bale is damn good you know and that was one i I had a hard time keeping out of my list i knew you would have it though i can't believe you didn't have this like that (laughs) that is amazing Part of me was like, I gotta have a couple that he doesn't have. But even then, when I did that, you still are on the same fucking page as me. Like we're gonna have, we're gonna have four of the same fucking movies. (laughs) Uh. Vice is one I always recommend to people. A lot of people are apprehensive because it's about Dick Cheney and they don't want to see a movie that's gonna tell his story. And I'm like, it's not flattering. Like, yeah. Do you know who Adam McKay is? Yeah. Like he is as liberal as they come. Yeah, this is the guy you would want making a Dick Cheney movie. Yeah, this and, is the guy who made Don't Look Up and the Big Short and fucking Step Brothers. Like, yeah, he's not a Republican. <laughs> no, he's yeah. This is a uh, this is amazing. I every time I look at I, I watch the trailer to Vice quite often because it's such a brilliantly made trailer. It is a good trailer. You're right. And yeah, that's one of my like weird hobbies is I'll go back and watch old trailers and just be like, yeah, that was good. That's not weird at all. That's not weird. Especially after you've seen the movie and then you watch the trailer, you're like, oh, wow, that was even better than I thought, you know? It does feel odd to watch trailers for movies years back, but then, you nah. know, I have that same feeling of, like, I kind of want I want to see that now. Like, it's... it's uh, Anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, Vice know, is, I, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Vice is awesome. I love seeing, you know, Christian Bale and Sam Rockwell as, you know, W just act circles around one another and yeah it's it's such a crazy well done movie that i think you know probably should have taken best picture that year frankly like it's it deserved it for me like i would have been okay with that that's tough year um yeah green book takes it right Uh, yeah i would i would have been okay with almost any other movie uh aside from behemoth rhapsody i think that one's like way worse than green book but I mean, yeah, Roma, the favorite, Vice, like Stars Born, any of them, just, yeah. just, just not that shit. You know? yeah. But you know, however way you slice that, Christian Bale was one hundred percent robbed that year. That was yeah. you know, that performance is a performance that any actor could point to and say that defines my career. But for Christian Bale, it was just you know Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, just two thousand eighteen. Yeah, gonna keep yeah. gonna keep it moving. Gotta lose this weight. Moving. I'm doing Ford v Ferrari next month. Yeah, that's yeah. Ford v Ferrari was very tough to leave out. I I just watched that um 
you know, a few days ago. And I was, man, I love that movie. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not, it's the same as The Fighter. It's not like life changing, but like, cool story. Fucking American as shit, you know, and good performances, good execution. And, you know, we had, you know, you have fun along the way. Like, uh, but, but Bale's, again, the centerpiece. He's the guy you're always like, where's Ken Miles, you know? <laughs> and uh, getting to watch him in Vice, my favorite scene. <laughs> Of that movie is uh, when he's actually Dick Cheney, as we as we as we know him, and Mister Mister just attack anybody who doesn't look like him uh, type type guy. Uh, I love when he is eating like he's eating like a Danish or something, and they're like, "Oh, I thought you were trying to lose weight." He was like, "Don't tell my wife that," you know. <laughs> it's just like a little like it's one of those little decisions like an actor makes, a performer makes, and he. He does this thing where he dusts like the powder. It's like a powdered donut or, or Danish. I don't fucking know. And he like dusted off on his pants as he's talking about murdering people in other countries. And it's it's that like those little things that Bale does in movies where you're like, like you said, he just disappears. He's just gone. It's not him anymore. It, like it is Dick Cheney for this two hours. For me, there was a scene where he's... um. Uh, Cheney's being like, he's doing some kind of video call where he like, he couldn't be there in person, but they got him on a big TV in like a meeting. Yeah. And the grains on that TV, it, I thought it was really, I thought it was real footage of Cheney. Yeah. But it, it wasn't, it was Christian Bale, but I, I couldn't tell. And I was blown away by the fact that I couldn't fucking tell. <laughs> fucking weird. Yeah. 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 Shit. Yeah. That's, that's a movie that I know you've wanted to do. So, Damn. Um, if he would, if he would have won for that, that's what we would have probably done here. You know, it'd be fun to do a a, a bail spotlight with Vice, but he wasn't even nominated, uh, or he was nominated, but not. You know, didn't get a win. And the fighter, he does get the win. So, I like I like keeping around the the, the gold. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I got gotcha. you. I get it. But you know, one day. And and I thought Amsterdam wasn't going to be a piece of shit. So like I oh, I haven't seen it, so I can't really say that. But. Like a few a few weeks back, I was like, "Oh, Amsterdam's coming out." David or Russell, Christian Bale, like, let's do the fighter. And we were like, "You were like, yeah, let's do it." We didn't know, you know, we didn't know this was going to happen. <laughs> we didn't know we, neither of us were even going to see Amsterdam. But here we are. I don't really care because uh, we get to talk about Bale. So okay, so Vice is your number two. Obviously, Prestige is your number one. Yes, it is. <laughs> and go ahead, take it away. <laughs> All right, so. Again, it came down to, you know, I'm going to watch The Prestige before I'm going to watch Vice. The Prestige mm. is one of my favorite movies about obsession. Mm. And I just love this, you know, this constant bickering of like, who's the better magician between, you know, Bale and Jackman, the lengths these two men are willing to go to be recognized for their craft. And the first time I watched this, I did. All right. Spoiler alert. But it's been, you know, came out in 2006. So come on. Yeah, it's 16 years old. Yeah. I didn't realize that Bale was playing two characters in this movie. Mm. And that's what separates me neither. Me neither. Yeah. When I, when I first saw it and, and yeah, really it took me until at that time we're 11 years old. You don't know what the fuck's going on, you know? Uh, but as you get older, you're like, Oh, this is like way deeper than I, than I thought. Yeah. He's playing Alfred Borden and his secret twin brother Fallon, who has been with him this whole time concocting these tricks living one life as two different men and you don't you can't like they play it so he plays i said they i said i said i said they <laughs> god damn it christian bale um, christian bale and christopher bale yeah. <laughs> yeah he plays it so well that you 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 don't tell like you can't tell when it's a different man until you know the end of the movie and then you, you start thinking it back and you're like oh shit those moments uh, and in the end, at the end of the film, like you don't really have a, a villain. Like they're both pretty despicable in what they were willing to do, and it's it's so freaky the whole you know Tesla box shit and all that. It's it's the length the lengths this film goes to always blow it blows my mind. But Bale's performance cements this movie as just an absolute all time classic because of you know the the switch he's constantly pulling on the audience that yeah. I, I still can't believe. Yeah. And uh, do you think, you think they got a little bit of a, 
in- inspiration from ringers, dead ringers? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of that in there. Um, the idea of just twins, you know, living one life as, you know, for their own benefit, for their own weird fun game they're playing with all of yeah. society. It's it's a weird thing to do. You know, I, I twins run in my family. So there's a good, good to fair chance when I have kids, I'll have twins. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show them these movies and be like, don't do that shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, just don't name them. Don't name them Alfred, you know? <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think we all know I'm naming my kids Marty and Doc. Let's be honest here. <laughs> Doc. Here's baby Doc. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Marty. <laughs> Marty's a great. Uh, that's a fun, fun name for all ages. Doc. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. Uh. <laughs> well, yeah. This. So your number one is... American Psycho. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, I thought this was gonna be on your list. I didn't know it was gonna top it. This is this is exciting. I fucking love this movie so much. Uh, I, I I've owned it for a long time. I watch I watch it a lot. It's it's a special one. I think it's got I think I think it's got a lot going for it. I think it's my favorite and like the best thing I've seen him do. Uh, he he's he is such a fucking freaky bastard in this movie. Cannot believe it was not nominated for anything. Really sucks. Oh, dude, the fucking world was against Bale with this movie. Everyone wanted him to fail. Nobody wanted him to do this. Everyone was like, "This is it for you." And then he was like, "You know, I don't fucking care. I I know I can do this." So I'm glad he had confidence in himself. Yeah, me too. Uh. And it's, I feel like it's in a, at this point, it's become an essential genre film from this century. I feel like it's one of those, oh, if you haven't seen American Psycho, you just kind of lose street cred like immediately. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's, I feel like it's one of those. Uh, and, you know, he, he does some shit in this movie that makes you kind of question, you know, uh, at that age, how was he able to, you know, go to, go to a place like this, you know, uh, why not you stupid bastard <laughs> you know like uh with justin through you know like some of the scenes with them uh man just fucking lights out nobody is on the same like wavelength as him because he's so fucking freaky in this movie like no nobody maybe willem dafoe is like i get it i get this guy you know i'm gonna i can i can play along here but for the most part everybody's just like good god what it's like a bunch of you know fucking Looney Tunes going against going up against Michael Jordan. You know, it's like that kind of a thing going on here. It's something to behold. I've, Patrick Bateman's one of the only, um, like like character names, or not not only, but one of the first character names that I like. I just like memorized and learned and was like, I'm always going to remember that. Like if someone says Patrick Bateman, I know where my mind is going immediately. I'm not going to be like, wait, who's that? It's it's like synonymous. It's just bang, bang, like right away. I started thinking about American Psycho. Uh, yeah, it's been number one <clears throat> for a long time. I don't, I don't really see what he could do to knock this off. This is just right up my alley, you know. Uh, he, he's saying crazy shit, you know, like out of context. If you were to say his quotes, you'd look like a fucking you know demon. Like I, I love <laughs> like like stuff like you're a fucking ugly bitch. I want to stab you to death and then play in your blood. Like what the fuck? This is, this is a complete monster. And then the, the, I, I love that you mentioned the Tom Cruise piece to this. Yeah. It adds such a fun layer to the movie. You know, uh, you rewatch it now and you're like, that's great. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just fun. Yeah. I, my all time favorite is, uh, I like to dissect girls. Do you know, I'm utterly insane. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I'm a child of divorce. Give me a break. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I love the, the whole uh, business card like comparison. You know, the, like basically like whipping it out in front of one another and being like, "Look at that, huh?" With their business mm-hmm. cards and yeah. just being intimidated by Jared Leto. I, I have it right here. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my God! It even has a watermark. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Like who puts that much thought into a scene about fucking business cards? Like it's <laughs> it's insane. The voiceovers are so fucking good. Uh, when he's he, he's talking about Paul Paul Allen's uh, apartment, he's like, "There was a moment of sheer panic when I realized that Paul's apartment overlooks the park. 
and it's obviously more expensive than mine. <laughs> oh, the voiceovers are such a such a good touch. And I'm not normally a big voiceover guy, but when yeah. you do it right, when you do it right, it can be like evil and funny as shit. I always love the out of the blue uh, when he brings the two uh, women up to his apartment and just has them like, you know, start having sex with each other. And he just randomly goes, don't just stare at it. Eat it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) When he's looking at himself in the mirror and he's just flexing. (laughs) And, and, you know, and and some of the horror stuff in it, 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 like dropping of the chainsaw down the stairs, like just some like really graphic, but like brilliant filmmaking. And, uh, you know, again, here, here he is always at the, at the center, centerpiece of the movie, whether he's lead or supporting. Like, Bale is what you walk away with. In that, uh, that GQ video, he mentions that while they were making American, while they were prepping American Psycho, he got fired. He and the director were, were kicked off the project. And the director, I forget her name, was like, we're done. You know, this isn't happening anymore. And Bale's like, no, no, no. This, this is happening. Like I'm playing Patrick Bateman and he kept preparing. He got, kept getting his body in shape. He kept working on the voice, the character. He didn't stop. He wasn't attached to the project anymore. They were talking to other people. And then like months later, they couldn't find anybody else. So they brought him and the the director back on board and all of his hard work paid off because he was like, this is going to happen. That's such a Patrick Bateman thing to do, to be like, no, I'm not gone. I'm not off the project. I am the project. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, trust me, I am the project. Yeah, it's uh, directed by Mary Heron. Uh, yeah, Mary Heron, which is uh, uh, another another thing where it's like maybe you know, I, I like I she should have up for best director. You know, like she like this movie is brilliant. Uh, what's weird about about her though is like it, you, she doesn't really follow it up. Uh, before that, she had directed I shot I shot Andy Warhol, nineteen ninety six. After American Psycho, she does the notorious Betty Page, like these movies that just haven't really lived on the way that you know American Psycho has. And uh, you know she she owes something to Bale for proving proving her wrong. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> what a hell of a way to kick in the fucking door of Hollywood, am I right? Uh, quite literally, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what's that one line? There's one line where he's like, "I don't want to get you drunk." that's some very expensive Chardonnay that you're not drinking. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's just fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> that's great. Uh, I guess it's not really a surprise that neither of us had, uh, had Batman. Yeah, I would probably choose begins if I had to, I think, I think some of the stuff at the beginning of begins is so impressive as he like becomes Batman and you know, the Bruce Wayne stuff is really fascinating in that one. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't quite. It just doesn't quite. Uh, and then you know, there's you know, I didn't have Vice. I, Ford versus Ferrari, I think, is is like wonderful. Um. There's 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 plenty of movies. Hostels, I thought, I think is great. Plenty of movies that that you could make an argument for. Yeah. It's hard. I think Batman, especially, like I don't really think anybody's anybody who's taken the role has dominated with like in terms of performance. That hasn't happened yet. Mm. I feel like Robert Pattinson was the one who was trying the hardest to be like, this is mine. Like, I'm making this Robert Pattinson. Whereas, you know, yeah, you, you know, your you're Michael Keaton's and your 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 Christian Bale's and your Ben Affleck's are like, ah, I'm like, I'm I'm going to like do do the do the Bruce Wayne thing. Like, I'm going to do the comic yeah. thing. And Pattinson was like, oh, like Matt Reeves and him were like, let's let's make like a totally new the Batman, you know, and it, it paid off for me as a fan and I, for you as well. Like, I love that movie. I think he tried like hard to like make that special. I agree. I agree. I think he really, he really did like tap into something else, which is cool. Uh, but Bale, you know, I, I, I like him as Bruce Wayne. I don't care for him as Batman that the voice he chose to do really hampers that. And that's a damn shame. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like I laugh sometimes while watching and it's like that shit that I shouldn't be laughing. Like when I'm watching Matt Reeves, the Batman, I'm like, uh, like, holy fuck. Like I might laugh a little bit with Colin Farrell, like a little bit, just cause I'm like, that's Colin Farrell. But yeah. Or, or, or like, you know, Batman returns. I'm like, fucking Danny DeVito and Christopher Walken are so fucking bonkers. But with, with Bale as, as again, like you said, as Batman, like when he's like, where is she? Like I start laughing. I'm like, 
I'm like, what is that? What are, what are we? Do? What are we doing? You know, it's become a joke amongst me and my me and some of my buddies. Where like, if someone says like something about a woman, like one of the other people will say, "Where is she?" <laughs> you know? like, it's like a, it's like a running joke, and like I, I don't know if it's supposed to be a joke. You know, no, it's like it's during one of the most tense scenes in the film where he's you know yeah, yeah. Joker to find out where the hell his you know the woman he loves has been stashed and. Yeah, that's not supposed to summon an inside joke, and that's just kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, yeah, this is great. Christian Bale, uh, Christian Bale list. Uh, I've always wanted to do this, so this is cool that we got to. Uh, my number five was Knight of Cups. My number four is Three Ten of Yuma. My number three is The Prestige. Number two, The Fighter. Number one, American Psycho. For you, number five, American Psycho. Number four, also Three Ten of Yuma. Uh, number three, the fighter. Number two, Vice, and number one, the Prestige. So we had four, four of the same movies. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Um, you know, I I thought about uh, Machinist. I thought that movie thing that you know that, that really shows him really going for it with the weight loss thing. And he apparently was like sleeping like two hours a day to prepare for that role. Um, I really like him in Rescue Dawn. Yeah, that's a underrated film i I like him in even you know michael mann's public enemies not a great movie but he's he's awesome in it um out of the furnace he's great in that movie plays a guy named russell blaze fuck yeah um big short he's really good in hostels and i'd say ford versus ferrari like there's like 10 other movies where you're like yeah those are those are great too even his performance in thor love and thunder which has it was the best part of the he's the best part of the movie yeah He's doing something completely different. He was told, I am an alien who kills gods and likes it. And he just rolled with that shit. And everybody else is like, yeah, everybody else is like, we're fucking in an episode of, uh, what's that fucking show that he does? Uh, What we do in the shadows? Yeah, the the movie and the show. Yeah, it's like everybody else is like in in an episode of that, like for Hulu. And Christian Bale is like, I'm going to fucking go for it. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) He's, yeah, he's in a, he read a completely different screenplay than everybody else. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's, you know, just extra bonus, awesome content for every film he's a part of. He brings a, a special nuance to every performance. You can tell that he pours everything. I've never seen him phone it in. Like that's for sure. Oh no. Oh no. And, and he's set to be in another movie this year, the pale blue eye, ah. uh, a crime horror mystery movie. Don't even, I don't even know anything else. I'll, I'll, I'm curious it's, about that. I know Harry Melling is playing Edgar Allan Poe. Fuck yeah. So. All right. <laughs> uh, there's also a movie he's supposed to be in next year called The Church of Living Dangerously. That's pretty much all I need to know. <laughs> Good title. <laughs> yeah, and he's in it. Uh, how one of America's biggest pastors became a drug runner for a Mexican cartel. Cool. Fuck. Yeah, that's a great. <laughs> I, I want to see that. Yeah, I'm I'm in. And the only person who's casted so far, Christian Bale, is John Lee Bishop. Cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, so that's stuff to look forward to over the next couple of years. Like he's he's not going anywhere, you know. Um, this guy, this guy's the man. And uh I guess the fighter is kind of a I guess you could say like a halfway point of his career. You know, if you if if you start with like Empire of the Sun, nineteen eighty seven, where it's like okay, he's like in movies now in the late eighties, go through the nineties. You know, twenty years later, you have the fighter, and here we are, twelve years after the fighter, which is crazy, crazy to think about. Um, I I love thinking about time like that, like how much time has passed since since this movie and since Bale became Bale. Uh, it's not so far off, you know. We're further away from the fighter than the fighter is from American Psycho. That's weird. That's fucking weird. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, I love love thinking about time that way, man. And I also love uh, giving out awards to these movies that we've gotten to gotten to gotten to be with and rewatch. And this is this is part of the point of of this show is. You know, we like to watch new stuff, but when you rewatch something and have the intentions of giving it awards, you, you you kind of open up a new a new portal. And that's kind of what happened with me last night while watching watching the fighter. It also can give you reasons to kind of critique it. 
where you're like, hmm, I didn't like that decision or, or I didn't think it was as easy to pick this award as I thought it was going to be. So I love that about, about this show. So we have, uh, you know, the, you know the drill. We got the Tarantino for best quote, the Ennio Morricone for best music moment, the, the Philip Simmer Hoffman for best performance, and the Roger Deakins for the best scene. So take it away when you're ready. Uh, yeah, my Tarantino was a bit difficult. Uh, it's a good story. I don't think it's a great, you know, amazing screenplay. Uh, yeah, but I did. I was able to find one. Uh, it's when Dickie gets out of jail, and he goes to the gym, and his, you know, Dickie and Alice just kind of ambush Mickey about, you know, getting him back to train, like together. And uh, Mickey finally, you know, pushes back against his family. And he says to his mom, I thought I was fighting for the championship. And I thought you were my mother, too. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that, that, was, that was some strong shit. Just, yeah, you know, everything's about Dickie. He was the guy who fought Sugar Ray. So he had his chance. You know, he was the pride of Lowell. What about Mickey? And finally, all that came out. Yeah. I love that. I love Melissa Leo. Like, Oh, I didn't know you thought that way. You know, I didn't think you, you thought like that, you know, it's like, well, obviously (laughs) come on. (laughs) Nope. You're not paying attention. Are you? (laughs) Yeah. So good. So good. Um, Melissa Leo, you know, what a cool part of her career. Like it's this, it's, it's kind of like a defining moment for her and she's, she's got some of the best lines, you know, she's, and she's also got some of the you know craziest shit to do, like the scene where she's throwing fucking pots and pans. She's like, she's like, I'm the manager, <laughs> you know. Uh, she, she's great. So yeah, I really like that scene between the three of them. You know, yeah. I, I I've always thought that was really good, and and Amy Adams is great in that scene as well. She's like, you know, just looking right at him, like, what do you want to do here? You know, it's either them or me. You know, come on. Get it together. <laughs> yeah. And then he fights back with like, you sound like them now. You sound like yeah. them now. And she's like, I sound like them now. And then she fights. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Last last time I checked, and this is where the fucking, you know, uh Dirk Diggler shit comes out where you're like, oh God, that's fucking that's Eddie Adams from Torrance. He's like, not you, not you, not you. <laughs> I'm the one who's fighting, right? Come on. <laughs> so it's like when he's talking to his mom and Boogie Nights when he's like, I'm gonna do something special. You don't know. <laughs> It's so funny. Everything Mark Wahlberg does, I always am like, I go back to Boogie Nights and like that that initial reaction I had to him as performer being so young. I was like, man, that guy's that guy's got some energy. And he brings <laughs> he brings it back occasionally. You know, occasionally he'll he'll really go for it. Yeah, there's two kinds of Wahlberg. There's like, you know, sleepy, you know, I'm just reading the script here and I'll make it through this movie. Kind of Mark Wahlberg. And then there's I'm in charge. It's me. It's my dream. Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah. And there's uh, you know, departed Mark Wahlberg, which might be the best when he's like tied from fucking my mother. <laughs> you know, uh, how's your father? <laughs> tired from fucking my mother. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's that Wahlberg too, you know, um, Oscar, Oscar worthy um, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> he's great. Do you think he's, like, is this worth a nomination? What he's doing in the fighter or no? No, no, right? I'm very. I, <laughs> I I might have a bit of a beef with Mark Wahlberg. I just don't think he's a good actor. I think Boogie Neither Nights. I. He peaked with Boogie Nights. He, he was really trying there, but that was it, really. Like you know, he's. I think he's good in like Fear, or he's you know, yeah, a bit, of a bit of a psycho. But he's just been Mark Wahlberg his whole career. Like he's never really done anything i think worth talking about like he's been in some great movies but they weren't great because of him yeah he yeah it's really amazing that he's figured out a way to become one of the most profitable movie stars like that we have it's insane i I think that might be i think that might be changing because of like the way he is now like with the stuff you know he's like really into the christianity thing these days but there's there's a stretch there from you know mid 2000s to you know just a few years ago where it's like dude he's like one of the guys dude if it had just been like if, if fear and boogie nights and like the perfect storm hadn't happened 
we would be thinking of, we'd be looking back on Mark Wahlberg as like some vanilla ice knockoff who did some Calvin Klein ads. Yo, it's about that time to bring forth. <laughs> yeah. Right. That, yeah. that could have been the apex of his career. Yeah. And <laughs> kind of want to live in that world. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I owe him so much because of Boogie Nights as a fan. I owe him all the respect in the world because like, that's how much I love that movie. Yeah. And, and that's how much he means to that movie. He's really, really going for it. And, and you know, he's he's amazing. He's great in fear, too. What happened? You know, what happened? What the fuck? You're, you're like, you're like the side sidekick and the other guys 10 years later. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I do think him and Will Ferrell are actually like really good together in that. I was shocked when I saw that movie. I was like, <laughs> this is I was like, this is kind of funny. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, but, and Will Ferrell is just is is going for in that movie. But I really don't like that he's like come out lately and tried to like denounce you know Boogie Nights and be like I never should have done that movie. You know I'm a Christian now and like Christians don't show their dick on camera or whatever the fuck. It's like come on man, just it be. It's like the one like one of the few critically acclaimed hits you had. Like just to, it, honor that. Just you know it's respect the, it. It's the best movie you're in. Like yeah. And and you know uh, Julianne Moore came out and responded to that i don't know if you've read about that or heard about that i did not tell me her her response is like it gives me chills just thinking about it because he, he yeah he basically said like oh you know i shouldn't have done that I, I regret it and she's like well how can you regret the movie that made you exactly jesus christ like, Wait, there it is <laughs> she said you need to be grateful for the opportunity you got from paul thomas anderson and working with with me and working with burt reynolds you know like that that's why you're who you are so like be grateful you don't have to love the movie be yeah. grateful you didn't actually do porn in the 90s mark it's a movie <laughs> yeah good god you know i would i'd give a fucking i'd give it like a limb to be in that movie <laughs> like, I, I, if i could if i could be like i don't even i don't even need to be anybody in that movie I, if i'm just there for like a uh, scene, I, I'd give up like my fucking right index finger, you know. <laughs> like I, I really would. You'd be fluffer number five. <laughs> sure, yeah, I could be. I could be one of the guys that like they kill during, you know, you know, Chest Rockwell, you know, and and, and Brock Landers. Like I, I, I don't care. <laughs> Get- Chest Rockwell never fails to make me laugh. Yeah. Well, yeah. John C. Riley is the real star of that movie. Uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> Bookie Nights. That's great. Wish Christian Bale was in Boogie Nights. That would be cool. Uh, <laughs> instead, he was in Pocahontas. You know, <laughs> he does the he does the voice of one of the fucking people in Pocahontas. Anyway, uh, my 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 Tarantino is a, is a little bit longer. It's a it's a chunk uh, that I also thought about as my Deacons, but you know, I, I made some made some made some moves. Um, it's it's Dicky talking to Mickey before the last fight. Um, just really good stuff. I alluded to it at very beginning of the episode uh, and Dickie says to him are you like me huh was this good enough to fight Sugar Ray never had to win did I you gotta do more in there you gotta win a title for you for me for Lowell this is your time all right you take it I had my time and I fucking blew it you don't have to all right you fucking get out there you use all that shit that you've been through all that fucking hell all that shit we've gone through over the fucking years and you put it in the ring right now this is yours this is fucking yours <laughs> uh, and you're like I want to fight <laughs> Let's go. Bring him on, you know? <laughs> See, that's where it's like, I love that stuff, but every single boxing movie has that moment. Has to have it. It's always got to be the guy who's in their corner, you know, and like, ah, I've been there before, and I'm going to have that moment with you where, you know, it's it's me and you and against the world. And it's, it's corny as shit, but Christian Bale's great. Yeah. It is, you know, that's what I think keeps the fighter like holds it back from being a really great movie. Is just I think David O. Russell always dips into the box of cliches and just oh throws them up on yeah. the screen. He always does that. There's so little originality in his work. Yeah, we can start getting into that stuff for sure. Um, I, I'm going to bring it up for sure with my Ennio Morricone because I some of the needle drops are like, dude, it's supposed to be 1995, and you're playing. 2000 like you're playing songs from like 12 years after that like it makes no sense i I can't stand when directors do that it bothers the shit out of me you can play from the past but why play 
a fucking Chili Pepper song from 2006 when the movie is supposed to be like in 1997 at the time. Like, I, I'm like, why would fucking Mickey be listening to Strip My Mind? Great song. Love that song. You know, it's a great album. But why would he be listening to that while he's getting ready to train in 1996 or 1997? Like, it's like, what? Makes, just makes no sense. I can't stand when people do that because I want to be there. I want to be in that in that setting. I think music is such a cool way to capture time, time and time, you know, a, a, a specific time. And to like fuck that up is is really annoying. And then the cliches that you're 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 speaking about, the fighter is full of them. You know, I'm okay with it. Like every once in a while, like I'll watch a movie that like that is like the fighter. I'm like, I, I can get inspired like another like any other person. You know, you know, I, I, like I have a heart. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's I can't watch a lot of these over and over. These like yeah. he was down and then he's back up and then you know he got his last chance and took it. You know like it, it's just like I can't I can only do it every once in a while. You know, yeah. um, and like get that feeling that you're supposed to get where you get like amped up and get inspired. Uh, I, I have to take breaks. I I'm I'm really starting to resent this is our moment speeches. Where it's, you know, this yeah. is it. This is right here. This is what's going to happen. Like, this needs to happen now for, for all of us. Like, I hate that so much. Yeah. And l- unless it's like fucking Viggo Mortensen, you know, like, we will show them no mercy. You know, like that, you know, like that's the only time I really like the sentimental shit. <laughs> Nothing's topping, you know, a day will come when the strength of men fails, but it is not this day. Like, that is, yeah. Yeah. That is way far <laughs> yeah. away from this. <laughs> strength and honor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have our, you know, we have our, our our taste. Yeah, exactly. And I, I just like a little, you know, you can do stuff like that. Just again, put your own spin on it. You know, in you know, sprinkle in your own flavor here. Don't just, you know, I, don't, I feel like a like an AI bot writes some of this stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you know, I was looking into like what was true and whatnot about this story. You know, they, you know, of course, you know, it's Hollywood, so they take their liberties. Or whatever, but some of the timing is just so off. It's just like what? And if you, you know, some people are like, I don't give a fuck. You know, this could be a, a movie about a real guy, or it could be a you know fiction movie that's just inspiring. That's fine. But if you like care about boxing, I feel like you'd be kind of pissed off. You'd be like, whoa, that's not how it happened. That's not the order of events. That's not how it went down. And it's it's very clear that it's like 1993. I think at the beginning of the movie. From yeah. there on, from there on, it, we get kind of lost in that fight. Against, I think his name's Neary. The last, the last fight of the movie that I looked it up in real life was in two thousand. They never really tell you that in the movie. They never really are like, all right, now we're in nineteen ninety five. Now we're in nineteen ninety six. Now it just kind of goes, and he's like, I was gonna get a bigger apartment for my data. You know, like, and, and like that's how we figure out time has passed. It's just weird. Yeah, I think when you're telling a true story, you have an obligation to adhere to the facts a little harder. I mean, but that's just me. You know, I like if, if I'm going to watch a true story, a film that pl- claims to be a true story, I don't want to be bullshitted. And I feel like I am always bullshitted. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't like that. I don't like it. It's, it's a biopic. Like, take your time. Do your research. It's a big part of this new project I'm working on. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so w- without further ado, the Ennio Morricone Award. What would you choose? There are some really cool songs in this movie it's got a it's a cool soundtrack i just think some of them are misplaced even if they're a cool song it's like yeah i don't know but there is some good shit that's what i love most about goodfellas is the way it uses music to tell us when we're like what time we're at exactly it's it's gonna be tony bennett or fucking sid vicious like that's gonna tell me exactly what i need to know about what time this is and yeah (laughs) yeah yeah that's that's to me the the best part about the movie boyhood is it doesn't say like now it's 2006 it just plays you know like like at one point he's when he's like a freshman or sophomore in high school and you're like hmm it must be like 2010 and then fucking uh uh one of the songs off brothers from by the black keys plays and it's like that album came out in 2010 that's yeah, it was, fucking uh, cool i think it was she's long gone i remember yeah that. yeah oh, she's long yeah he's like at a party talking to the girl that he likes yeah. and yeah. That song's playing in the background, and you're like, I've been in that scenario. I've heard that song playing at whatever <laughs> whatever social event. Uh, or or at one point, he's going to school, and you're like, oh, it must be 2009. 
Phoenix starts playing. And you're like, oh, yeah, that album was huge for Phoenix in 2009. I love that shit. Yeah, that's all I need. It's, you know, I think too many filmmakers underestimate their audience. And that's yeah. that's just not. Anyway, uh, I went with uh, Good Times, Bad Times by Led Zeppelin when uh, Dickie gets arrested. Can't go wrong. That's a great scene. I Well, really, I was more surprised because, like, it is exceedingly rare to hear Led Zeppelin in a movie. Like, Robert Plant is very stingy about who gets to use his music. Uh, but I guess, you know, the fighter and Dungeons and Dragons honor among thieves. <laughs> I guess he's maybe he's softening up. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's um, at the beginning of Silverlang's playbook, doesn't Zeppelin play when he's on his jog? Yeah, uh, what is uh, what is and what should never be plays. That's in, uh, right. That's right. Silver Linings. So maybe David Russell has, you know, maybe he's tight with Zeppelin. <laughs> who, who knows? Yeah. Him and Jimmy are like, yeah, we go way back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Zeppelin pops up in the weirdest movie. Fucking small soldiers got to use communication breakdown. Like, you, you never know, but it doesn't happen a lot. Yeah. And and if you get the chance, you're like, I gotta fucking take this to, you know, I gotta really do this right. I do think good times, bad, like, it's, it, it's an effective scene. Yeah, just, you know, from wh- whoring out his, gr- his girlfriend and then pretending to be a cop to bust the guy and then getting busted by the real cops and then running through the, ci- through the city trying to get in that club and then decking the cops and it's just a great, you know, fucking avalanche of a scene that you know, Zeppelin just enhances. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a good, that's a good choice. I, I thought about that. I thought you were going to go with the Rolling Stones. Can't you hear me knocking? I was very close. I, I almost yeah. went with a montage, but. Cause yeah, you know, another <laughs> boxing, another yeah. boxing trope. Like, yeah. oh yeah, here's the, here's the trainer and you know, the brothers fucking, they're in their sweatsuits and they're fucking running through Lowell. Like, yeah, you know, doing the Rocky thing. Like, <laughs> sure. It's fine. Great song. You know, I've always dug that song. I think it's, I think it's cool. Um, I want something pretty subtle here. Um, again, don't understand playing songs from like the two thousands, but this movie does it a few times and just fucking weird. But there is a bit before he fights Hernandez in New Hampshire. And this is a part of his like rise where he's like, I'm going to start winning, winning my fights. And I I moved on from, from Dickie. I've got to start from the ground up again with this, you know, new, new manager. Uh, Now I've got Charlene, Amy Adams, like by my side the whole time. Uh, He's in the hotel room in New Hampshire, uh, kind of looking in the mirror and fucking, you know, doing the whole thing and rock and roll stew by traffic is playing. And I was like, man, I completely forgot that this song was in this was in this movie. Really cool '70s song. I thought it was per- like put perfectly to to the bit of the movie. As they're walking out of the hotel room, the fighter he's about to fight, Hernandez, walks out of his hotel room because they're both poor. They're like, yeah, we have to walk to the venue across the street, you know, for to to fight. What a crazy scenario, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and rock and roll stew in the background is is a is a good touch. That's a that is not a song you hear a lot, you know, uh, in movies. And I thought it was, I thought it was well, well placed. Yeah. Yeah. I, good pick. Good pick. It's yeah. There's some soundtrack moments that, that, that hit. There's a lot that's like unnecessary. I don't know why, you know, I feel like a lot of them are just like Russell being like, I like that song. Let's put it in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is, this, like, this is a skill. This is a true, true skill. Like you, you really have, you know, Scorsese and Tarantino and Paul Thomas Anderson. Like these guys are like, they really know how to choose enough obscure songs and things that you like haven't ever heard in a movie because they've done like all of their research and watched everything under the sun. They're so good at making the score, the soundtrack and using that as like, as, as a character with David Russell, I feel like he does this a lot and it doesn't work. And he's like, I'm going to do that. Like, I'm going to use that, that, that trope of, you know, in all of his movies, like I'm going to, I'm going to have songs playing constantly to like get you from point A to point B. Like that's, that's like its own skill. And if you're not good at it, it can like take your movie down. And I feel like the fighter is being held back by it. I feel like if, if this movie had like a really, really good score, I feel like it could be, could be enhanced. Dude, he wants to be Martin Scorsese so so bad. Yeah, it's it's sad. 
I mean, he, like, you know, he's, he's poached Robert De Niro. He's doing the soundtrack thing. I mean, the fighters, like he wanted this to be his raging bull. It's, yep. it's weird. He's, he's got this, I, I feel like a weird obsession with Scorsese with this guy. And he just, he's nowhere near that kind of talent. I, yeah, I don't get this guy. Yeah, me either, man. Me neither. What's what's some other stuff you like though? Like I I liked uh, back in the saddle, the Aerosmith song. I thought that was like a cool. That was an interesting touch, close to the end of the movie. Um, of course, you know, you have uh, we we mentioned "Can't You Hear Me Knocking." That's just a just a fantastic song. It's hard to fuck that up. <laughs> yeah, I I thought you know how do you like me now wasn't timely, but it worked for the movie. The, uh, like as the opening and ending, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought that was cool. Um, the montage, the first montage song, I wrote that down, but I, I, I erased it. I don't remember the name of the song. Uh, which, which, which? Uh, it was the first, uh, like where he's training with Dicky for the first fight. Here, I'm gonna look, um, I'm gonna look up the soundtrack. I'll know the song as soon as I see it. Okay. The fighter soundtrack. Um, I mean, you got you got "Here I Go Again" by White Snake. So, yeah. yeah, his as his walkout song that was fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, it was that was fun. Yeah, a little on the nose, but you know, whatever. Yeah, Saints, Saints by the Breeders. That's what ah, it that's a cool track. Yeah. yeah, that is a cool track. Yeah, no, like if this is just a playlist on Spotify, cool. I did love uh, Dicky just chilling in a crack house, listening to Dance Hall Days by Wang Chung. Fantastic with all with all the Cambodians. Yeah. What a what a weird like side story. Like what like do we need all that? <laughs> He's know. talking like they try to talk the Cambodians into a pyramid scheme, and the one friend's like, "No, this isn't about Cambodians. Like white people do this to each other too." And Dick yeah. like, "You're not helping, dude. Shut up." <laughs> that was great. That was a great scene. Yeah. He's like, "No, you give me two hundred dollars." <laughs> He's like, "No, that's not how it works. You know, it's an opportunity of a lifetime." <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, all right, Philip Seymour Hoffman Award. This is I mean, a Christian Bale's movie. Come on. Yeah, I agree. I think I think it's Bale and Melissa Leo's. You know, a few few you know, few levels down. Then after that, it's like uh, I guess Amy Adams probably is a third. Yeah, the sisters are in fourth, and then Mark Wahlberg fifth. <laughs> I like his dad who just kept like. Oh. Dude. Trying his hardest to like be involved but stay out of shit. Jack McGee, yeah. Jo- George is an awesome character. I love when what does Mark Wahlberg say to him when he whenever they're like trying to go to Atlantic City at the beginning of the movie and and Bale fucking jumps down to like the trash bin or whatever, which we see like five times. Yeah. He, he, uh, George, the dad, runs in and like uh, t- tries to like tackle him. He's like. Why'd you come in like a silverback gorilla or something like that? <laughs> it's like that's so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love when he shows up to sh- to uh like save his 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 son from the wrath of Alice and the sisters, and then he just drives up and he sees them all outside the house and he just <laughs> back in his car. Yeah. Like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a great scene. <laughs> yeah. It's it, it it is like you said. It's Bale's movie. Uh, Dicky is like who you're really trying to watch the whole time. He's the most fascinating. Um, God, Christian Bale is the man. Uh, the Roger Deakins Award, best scene of the movie. As you know, with every boxing movie, like, you know, the climax is going to be that that last fight, the big fight. And yeah. I went with that, the title fight. I, I do like it. Neary, such it's a pretty prick. good. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. And just, yeah, I love after the, the pep talk, I kept, you know, like that's when the Rocky theme would kick in right there with the final round and just, he just kicks near his ass and then he wins. And it's like, ah, ah yes. And it's it's expected, you know. They're always gonna win the last fight. Well, not always. If well, I guess now, you know, Rocky lost, but then he won in every other movie. So fuck it. Yeah. Um, no, it's 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 more about like I overcame my fear and like my yeah. my downfall, you know, and like I came back and here I am. Like every boxing movie is always like the Southpaw, the movie that came out a few years ago. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't really care for it because I was like, really? This is like all of those tropes, but just done in a movie I'm just not going to care about for like the rest of my life. Like it's not, it's not Rocky. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's certainly not Raging Bull. It's not, it's not even the fighter. So it's just like, I just don't care. I just don't care. 
Rocky's the template for fictional boxing movies. Raging Bull was the template for true story boxing movies. So yeah, we'll just, yeah, it's, yeah. I like, like that. You ever see Cinderella Man with Russell Crowe? I like that movie. I like that one. I like it too, but again, it takes so many liberties with like with with reality. Like the bad guy of that movie was not a bad guy in real life. Like he he killed a man in the ring, but it haunted him his entire life. Like he yeah, he didn't brag about that shit. So like, they make they make it seem like he's like I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, yeah like yeah. he's a serial killer who uses a boxing glove. I I like that movie because Paul Giamatti. Yeah, he's he's amazing in that movie. Yeah, it's like 2004. Yeah, I remember really liking it when I was younger because I was so into Crow as a kid uh, because again because of Gladiator. But um, but yeah, it's fine. It's not not something I'm like let's throw it on right now. You know, when I when I talk about Rocky, I'm like I want to watch Rocky Four right now. And when I talk about Raging Bull, I'm like yeah, any any time you know any day of the week like oh, I'll go for that one. So that's why they're the best. Um, you know, I almost chose the final final bout as well because you got the you got the the press conference that's really great leading up to it. You got the actual fight, you got the the post thing where like they, they he fucking wins and Dickie's like yeah and he's clean and you're like oh this is great. Uh, it's it's a good it's a good finale. It it sticks the landing, does what it needs to do. My favorite bit of the movie really. And like what what draws me in the most is the is the, the 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 drug stuff the HBO special that they're doing about Dickie's comeback. Um, you find out in the movie it's it's clearly about his addiction to crack, and like what it can do to you. The opening the opening scene of this movie is my favorite scene of the movie when he's on the couch and he's like, "Sean, do I fucking look into the camera, straight into the camera?" You know, and he's 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 freaking out and he's like, "Oh, there's my brother." taught him everything he knows you know and 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 when he starts describing both of them as fighters me and my brother jeremy have always quoted that 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 bit of the movie you know my my brother's always been like i'm fucking squirrely as fuck (laughs) you know and 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 i've always been like uh you know i'll I'll carry it on and i'm like yeah well you know he he's, he's he's real powerful he's got a he's got a strong left hook but you know he likes to he likes to bring him in tight he likes to play it inside i'm on the outside you know (laughs) it's it's such a it's such like a iconic thing for for me and my brother Jeremy. We've always admitted like we don't love that movie, but we love certain scenes from that movie. That's kind of the story of the fighter for me. It's like there are strong strong moments, mostly because of Bale. But it's it's, it's I don't know. It's not something super super special. It's special watching him. And so at the very beginning of the movie, I think David Russell knew like what he had. To an extent, I think he knew like, oh, I got this bail guy. This is lightning in a bottle. Like this performance, this character is like a match made in heaven for him. Let's open up with that. Like, let's open up with our strongest, uh, you know, asset. And yeah, he's, he's, he's fucking intoxicating. Just sitting on a couch talking about his brother. And I love when he goes back over and over and over to the Sugar Ray thing. Yeah. So, hey, I knocked Sugar Ray down, you know, 10, 10 rounds. I went toe to toe. You know, he said, you he said I was the trickiest fighter he ever fought. You know, he couldn't get to me. He couldn't get to me. You know, I, I love, I love that. And it all, it's all set up at the, that, that very first scene when he's talking about it, he's like, people still talk about it now in the pride of Lowell. Yeah. You know, this guy's just a, he's just an addict. Like I, like at, at the core, he's just a fucking crack addict who like won't shut up. And like, that's the movie I want to watch. It's like, yeah. I want to watch, I want to watch Dickie. <laughs> Yeah. The most tragic thing is everybody realizes that except him and and his mom, who's still holding on to that, you know, that pride. Uh, it's, yeah, God. It's great. Yeah, totally get why you'd pick that. Yeah, I'm squirrely as fuck. <laughs> I love that quote. <laughs> uh, you can see Jeremy saying that, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, squ- I'm squirrely as fuck. Uh, it's good shit, man. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's fun. That's fun stuff, you know. Uh, I think we're on the same page with this movie. I think, yeah. I think there's an understanding that we like it, don't love it, and that's just fine. Um, the 83rd Academy Awards, though, you know, I, I do think these are these are always fun to look at, these categories. We have seven of them to get through before we get out of here. Um, we'll end with those two wins. The supporting uh, supporting categories, we'll, we'll end with those. Let's start with... Uh, 
Damn, some pretty big stuff here. Um, let's do film editing, I guess. Okay. Yeah, because we got we got screenplay, which uh, I don't know about that. Directing, don't know about that. Uh, Amy Adams, yeah, and best picture. Okay, yeah, let's let's do film editing. All right. So he's. I, I hate being like, let's pick the least one, you know, the lesser one. But like, I don't know, I, where else do we start? <laughs> You know what you know what I mean? Because like I always go to bat for these these like quote unquote weaker categories. Like well, I don't know. Let's be honest. If you start the Oscars show with picture, actor, director, actress, the, the show's going to lose some punch. For sure. You know you want to watch the stars. You want to watch. You know you yeah. got to build up to something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree. That's a good way of putting it. Uh, best film editing winner, Social Network. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it beat. 127 hours, Black Swan, The Fighter, and The King's Speech. This is like no contest for me. Social yeah. Network. I'm with you, man. Social Network. That thing is, you know, the way that's edited makes it interesting, which is, you know, difficult for a movie about Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's the thing about Social Network is on paper, like I should fucking hate that movie, but yeah. <laughs> it's it's got a lot of magic going for it. It's got the Fincher thing. It's got the editing. It's got the Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross score. It's got Eisenberg doing the best work of his career. It's, it's got a lot of things just just going for it. You know, Andrew Garfield, Justin Timberlake, you know, Rooney Mara. Everybody's just, dare I say, Army Hammer. You know, everybody's just going for it, and and it worked. It's, to me, my favorite movie from this from this ceremony. Twenty um, ten's a, a cool year, but. I think Social Network should have won a lot of stuff. I remember when I was watching the Social Network and I saw Army Hammer on screen, I remember thinking, this guy has the talent to one day sell timeshares in the Caymans. Yeah. Yeah, me too, you know? <laughs> and, and, yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I will never yeah. not find that hilarious. It, uh. it, it is hilarious. It's not, it's not even up for debate. That's funny as shit. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do... We'll hold off on Amy Adams because we can tie her in with Melissa Leo. Uh, let's do screenplay, director, best picture. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a good way to go. Best screenplay, best original screenplay. This is always one of our favorite categories, Connor and I. We love a good original work from a writer, director. Uh, and, you know, while I don't think the fighter should be there, I still like looking at these. Uh, the winner is The King's Speech by David Seidler. Uh, another year. Uh, King Speech won. It beat another year written by Mike Lee. Yeah, he's he's a he's a name you'll you'll see popping up here and there at the Oscars. Uh, the Fighter written by Jesus Christ, uh, Scott Silver, Paul Tamasi or Tomas, I don't know Tamasi, Eric Johnson. Story by Keith Dorrington, Paul Tamasi, and Eric Johnson. Yeah, a lot of a lot of dudes there. Tells me Keith Dorrington really wanted his name on that movie because I feel like you don't need all that. Yeah, you definitely don't need all that. Yeah, you know, make it a little cleaner. Uh, Inception, Christopher Nolan. And the last nominee is The Kids Are All Right, written by Stuart Blumberg and Lisa Cholodenko. Cool, cool name. Yeah. This, uh, this, isn't, th- this isn't that great, this group, overall. Yeah, it's a, it's a weak group. This is uh, It's not often adapted screenplay looks better by comparison. Oh, uh, Yeah. Yeah, True Grit, Toy Story, and Social Network. Yeah, come on. Give me that group. Yeah. Hmm. Original screenplay. I, I like the King's Speech, but I think I give this to the kids are all right. Yeah, that is like a classic like um, Oscar movie that's, you know, it's very, very raw. Very, you know, very, very real or whatever. You know, it's 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 timely. You know, you watch this movie in 2010, the kids are all right with uh, uh, Julianne Moore and Annette Benning as, you know, lesbian partners with two kids it's got a lot of like meaty stuff that like you can really make you think so I, i'd go with that that or inception would get my vote i think i think inception probably second inception's cool but it's a dense fucking screenplay i want a screenplay to pop like you know popcorn i want that i want it to be just you know sizzling i want to yeah I want creative dialogue and cool characters and yeah i I got I got that from the kids are all right. I think the King's Speech is a little little dull at times. I think the fighter is you know just raging bull like after it's been ironed to death with all the 
life sucked out of it. And yeah, Inception is is an acquired taste. I'll admit that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's totally fair. Good way of putting it. Um, what about director? This is this is an interesting group. We've got Tom Hooper winning for the King's Speech. Uh, he beat Darren Aronofsky, Black Swan, the Coen Brothers for True Grit, David Fincher for the Social Network, and David O. Russell for the Fighter. Um, I I think this is down to either the Coens or Fincher. Yeah, I think you're right. Shocking and- that I would pick the Coens and, <laughs> <laughs> and Fincher. Oh, how out of my wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Brave stance there. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think this, you know, this probably Fincher's time to take. Yeah. I think the work he does with the social network is again, you know, amazing because it is a story that, you know, sounds bland as shit, but he, you know, him and, you know, Sorkin working together pepper that thing with so much excitement that you just yeah. can't help but get invested in this story. And, you know, that starts with Fincher putting everything where it needs to be and just, you know, letting it, letting it happen. Yeah. That, that movie is like a miracle. It's like two hours long tells this massive, massive story about something that changed like lives across the universe. (laughs) Like it is like Facebook is one of those brands that is, that is international as fuck. Everybody knows about it. And Fincher like captured not only, um, a movie full of information, but like a fun movie. It's like genuinely rewatchable and yeah. has like, has like good moments, you know, I am CEO bitch, you know, like it has, it has like movie moments. And I'm like, ah, that's the, that's the genius of Fincher. Yeah, you're right. It is. Yeah. I've, I've come around. I remember like, you know, early on back in 2010, I was like the King's speech, you know, it's, it's so good. It's amazing. Colin Firth is, is incredible. And I still I'll stand by that one. He is incredible in that. Yes. But it's just not the most interesting movie there anymore. It's, you know, I, I don't really give a shit about the monarchy. Just don't. Okay. I like that. Let's hold off on best picture. Let's okay. do these other, let's do these other categories and do that. I think, I think we both have some, some fun stuff to say. I also think it'd be cool to cut it down to five again. Like I think we've always, always had fun doing that. No. Um, and sucks that the town's not there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> best supporting actress. You got the winner, uh, Melissa Leo for the fighter. Uh, she beat Amy Adams, the fighter, Helena Bonham Carter for The King's Speech, Haley Steinfeld for True Grit, and Jackie Weaver for Animal Kingdom. Has anybody talked about Animal Kingdom until now? I have never seen that, so I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I like I completely forgot Jackie Weaver was was nominated. That is a random one. She's a two time nominee, and I don't know. I don't really like. I can't picture what she looks like. It's weird. Like, yeah, that is that is bizarre. I, I just that's one of those you just you just forget. Uh, she's she's the mom in Silver Lang's playbook. Yep, her other nomination. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. Her and De Niro are married. Crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was Melissa Leo's to lose. Uh, I don't think Helena Bonham Carter is doing her best work in the King's Speech. I don't really get why she's here. Uh, Haley Steinfeld, I get. You know, she's holding her own against Jeff Bridges and Matt Damon. That's impressive. And you know, Amy Adams is. You know, the I'm hoping she's not going to be another Peter O'Toole. I want to see her win at some point. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, I just have this feeling. I just have one of those feelings where, like, where it, if it didn't happen already, she's done so much amazing shit. I know she's younger, but, uh, or, or not, you know, young, but she's young enough to keep going and get more nominations. But I, I don't know. She's, to me, one you know, one of the more talented people we've had over the past, you know, fifteen years or so. Uh, I guess June Bug is her first nomination, right? And then she's just just cranked them out since then. Yeah, and they're all pretty worthwhile too. It's uh, she's incredibly talented, but Melissa Leo is just you know, yeah, she's great in this. Wait, ugh, when she finds. Dicky, you know, he jumps uh, like down to the little dump, little mini dumpster, you know, and she like walks away and he follows her and he starts singing to her. She sings with him. I was, man, this is a devastating, devastating scene. And she was great. Yeah, it's a, such a manipulative relationship on both sides with that. Yeah, you get, you see how he became a crackhead. Yeah, there you go. 
It's a good. That's a that's a good point. Uh, this this you know, Animal Kingdom might might need to get some attention from us, man. We might need to see this movie. Uh, I, I just kind of like looking at it and like, hmm. Joel Edgerton's in it. Guy Pierce. I, I I don't know. There's something that's kind of speaking to me right now. It's only nominated for one Oscar. I love those. You know those random one offs. Uh, it's just her. It's just Jackie. I don't know. I feel like we need to see this. I just <laughs> I just finished a run of that '70s show, and I think just Jackie was a gag they did, like where <laughs> Jackie had her own talk show or something. But um, yeah, that made me laugh. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm down to watch Animal Kingdom. I love a lot of those people, and Australian film is pretty untapped for me. There you go. Maybe maybe we'll knock that out one day. Uh, come back around to 2010 and, and do it. Uh, best supporting actor, Christian Bale for the win, the fighter. Uh, he beat John Hawks for Winter's Bone, Jeremy Renner for The Town. Yeah, there's his competition. Mark <laughs> Ruffalo for The Kids Are All Right, and Jeffrey Rush for The King's Speech. Hmm. This is yeah. This is this is a two man race, but really Christian Bale was always taking it for me. I like Jeffrey <laughs> Rush though. I think instead of casting votes like they always do, I think that there should have been an Oscar placed between Christian Bale and Jeremy Renner, and they had to fight each other in character to get it. Oh, man. You think you're better than me? I'll fucking kick your ass. Yeah. Just both doing, yeah, like vicious Boston accents. Yeah. Oh, that would have been, that would have got the Oscar ratings way up. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to pick between those two. They're both doing incredible work in very similar toned films like, i don't I, I guess bail I'm, I'm gonna give it i'm gonna keep bail yeah me too i yeah i love jeremy renner in the town one of my one of my favorite like losers of all time in this category uh he, he's just on any given year you know I, I think he he's like should be there and has it like has a seat at the table um yeah but these those other three guys i think jeffrey rush is probably third and Ruffalo and Hawks are just like, yeah, you're there, but I don't know. I, I, I like both of them a lot, but those particular roles aren't that memorable. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's it's weird when, you know, people just get there because they're there. Like Andrew Garfield should be here for the social network. I don't know why he's not here. Straight I would give fucking Timberlake a nomination over some of these guys. Uh, yeah, he's great as Sean Parker. Like, great. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, hell, I give, give uh, Matt Damon for True Grit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, there's there was there were options here and that's that's unfortunate yeah that's always the most upsetting when there's stuff right staring right at you uh okay let's look at best picture all right when we did the town we both were like okay the town should be in here probably in winter's bone place yes now is the fighter one of the Five best from this whole category. We have the King's Speech as the winner, 127 hours, Black Swan, The Fighter, Inception, The Kids Are All Right, The Social Network, Toy Story 3, True Grit, Winter's Bone. Social Network right away, True Grit. I, I, I'd say Toy Story 3 caps off what at the time was like one of the most incredible trilogies ever. So that's that's three for sure. After that, I think it gets kind of dicey. Uh, yeah, of this group, no. I that's it. That's all I'd grab from this group. Yeah, I, I mean the town and the town, like like that should go. be there. That should be there instead of a lot, a lot of these. Yeah. But if you had to pick a fourth and fifth from this group, is the fighter one of them? I guess it is. Yeah. All right. So we've got. All right, we've got the Social Network, Toy Story 3, True Grit. From this group, I... I'd take Black Swan. I love Black Swan. And then and then the last pick, the last spot of this group, I'd probably give to Inception. It, mm. it was... That movie was huge. That was a big deal. And it's pretty good. It's pretty entertaining. Yeah. I do think it's important to, like, have representation and, like, make people give a fuck about the Oscars. And I think a, a movie like Inception is like a movie that people care about and it still gets talked about now. Yeah, you're right. I like Inception. I, I didn't like it the first time. I, I really liked it the second time. So yeah, I'll, I'll keep Inception. Okay, so the fighter's not even, not even in the five. 
I, not 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 just like taking other movies into account just out of this group it doesn't even make the cut uh yeah it's just you know i've, I've seen it before it's it's good bale's great but honestly like what does it bring to the table yeah yeah, yeah as an actual movie yeah if i'm gonna have you know if, if i'm gonna go to a restaurant and i want a boxing movie i'm gonna order raging bull I'm not going to order some like reheated leftovers. Like I want, I want the good stuff. And yeah. Yeah. yeah may, maybe when it hits like 2 AM and I'm feeling kind of sleazy, maybe then I'll like go out and yeah, get, get it. You know, the fighters like fucking, you know, Whataburger at 3 AM and you're like, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Every else is everywhere else is closed. Obviously we're from Texas uh, with the uh, Whataburger joke there. <laughs> Not every, not everyone has that, but uh, you, you know what I mean. You know, yeah. you, 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 it's three a.m. You're fucking hungry. Like, God damn it, I don't have anything here. I gotta go with the fighter. Yeah. <laughs> the fighter, the fighters on the menu. <laughs> so we're just we're cutting out the king speech. Uh, if it's five, I am. Mm. I'm cutting out 127 hours for sure. I don't think 127 hours is like worth a best picture nomination. I think it's a decent flick like best picture like what well, come on like i feel like a lot of people could make that movie and i i that's that's the sign of something that shouldn't be there same with the kids are all right i'm like yeah that's good but like come on and winter's bone nah man, i don't know she just isn't it overall because of how many goddamn nominations they do these days it just it can make your group look bad overall yeah absolutely it's a you know you're filling spots you're not taking into account quality here or whether or not they deserve it. It's like, we need, we got nine spots. So give me nine movies. That's really what it feels like. Yeah. And man, if you're going to do nine, I mean, there's blue Valentine, there's the town, you know, there, there's stuff from 2010, even fucking shutter Island. I like better than half these movies. There's stuff there. Yeah, totally, man. It's, I don't know. I don't know why they decided to do this and why they kept it for so long. I just, I, I wish they would go back to, to five. It's manageable, especially for us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of manageable, uh, this this is fun, man. I, I I fucking love 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 doing these either way. Even if the movie is, you know, the Godfather or fucking she done him wrong or 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 the fighter, you know, it's there's there's levels to this shit. And that's why we like some stuff more than others. You know, that's the point of art. It's like you're always going to be connecting. Um, but this big best picture category, we are we are taking on the daunting task of 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 doing a big big movie next week on this show. Uh, you're going to be going to Germany soon, yes. So we wanted to move up the best picture showdown. Normally we do it every fifth episode. Uh, next week is a hundred uh, episode one hundred and twenty four. So we moved it up from one twenty five to one twenty four, so that you could still do the best picture showdown before you leave for Germany. I'm all for that because I don't want to do a best picture showdown with anybody else, but you, <laughs> I, I, I know that you're going to watch as much as you can and, and try to reflect as much as you can and really give it some thought. Uh, and we're doing uh we're doing a recent year. Uh, it's 2019 parasite 92nd Academy Awards. It's a lot, a lot of movies. Obviously this is just three years ago. So they're, they're both still pretty fresh in our minds. Um, I'm going to rewatch as much as I can. I've already uh, uh, rewatched Marriage Story, Ford vs. Ferrari, and uh, Little Women. I'm going to skip Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because we just did that on this show not that long ago. Uh, and the others, I'll see what I can get to. Of course, we'll both watch Parasite. We'll give that another whirl. I can't fucking wait. It's going to go down as one of the most important, if not the most important, Best Picture winners in existence. And it, it, it's going to be an honor to talk about it. Talk about Bong Joon Ho's big night, uh, where he, you know, says I'm going to drink. I'm going to drink until the morning. You know, he's. He, it's going to be cool to talk about that ceremony and what it meant, and talk about Parasite and how you and I both like got to watch it in time, like watch that stuff unfold. We both got to see it in theaters, like before the Oscars, you know, and we watched we watched that wave of people like, no, this is actually. Like this might win. We like saw that happen, you know. Like it might beat 1917, you know. Like, and that was cool to be a part of. Probably my favorite 
ceremony that I've watched on TV where it was like, man, this is, this is, this is what it's about. You know, like this is, this is how the Oscars can be cool and can be something that movie people should care about. So I can't wait, man. It's going to be cool as shit to do that, to do that movie and do that, do that ceremony and rank those movies. That's a, that's a good group. Unlike 2010, the 2019 group has some bangers. Yeah. This was truly anybody's game that night, but I think we all knew it was time. And Parasite is such a mind-blowingly awesome movie, such a great rewatchable film that just stays with you. And I'm so excited to bring it to the show. And, you know, it gives me an excuse to break out the Criterion edition I bought a while back, which I'm excited to do. So, yeah, this is going to be so much fun. (laughs) Yeah, I I cannot fucking wait, man. It's going to be going to be good shit. Good way to send you off to Germany, you know, Um, good last Oscar Sunday before you come back. So I can't wait. Um, you're only gonna miss one of them, actually, aren't you? Right, just one. Yeah, I, yeah. And then the one after that, um, I've got you know a late night thing that I'm definitely gonna manage to do everything that day because I'm not missing that one. <laughs> yeah, because that the episode you come back for is gonna be the day before Halloween. So you know, yeah. of course, you're gonna we're gonna be doing some spooky shit. Gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, you know, get ready for Parasite. A lot of these movies are on streaming services. You know, there's there's easy access to those 2019 films. It's a, uh, I'll go ahead and say, let's see, Marriage Stories on Netflix, Irishman's on Netflix, uh, Ford vs Ferrari and Little Women, I believe, are not on anything right now because I had to watch them on Your Voodoo. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've got all of these movies, but it's not everybody. <laughs> uh, Joker is on HBO Max. Um, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is on Stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, Parasites on Hulu. Mm-hmm. Um, and what am I missing? Uh, 1917. Did you mention that one? I'm not sure if that's on anything either. I don't know. 1917 movie is on Prime. Oh, there you go, Amazon Prime. So yeah, like like over half of them are are accessible, and most importantly, Parasite's accessible. Yes, and uh, one of the one of the highest rated movies on Letterboxd, one of the most important uh, foreign films in 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 history. So can't wait; it's gonna be great. What's on uh, Filmgasm and Beyond the Bad this week? <laughs> Filmgasm, uh, in honor of the new Halloween, we are continuing our yearly tradition of tackling a Michael Myers film, and this time it is Halloween Three: Season of the Witch, a very divisive film because Michael's not in it. So you either love it or hate it. There's not a lot of middle ground with this movie. Yeah. And it's going to be a hefty debate because Caleb loves it. I hate it. And Colton is going to be there to make sure we don't rip each other's throats out. <laughs> Colton's like, I thought it was fine. <laughs> you can't yeah. you, you can't be like that. You can't play the middle. <laughs> he is slowly becoming the mediator between me and Caleb, which is hilarious. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and then beyond the bad is Wes Craven, uh, My Soul to Take, 2010. One of, oh. one of the worst films of his career. And... Uh, could have been his last movie if he had decided to crank one more scream out before he passed. Uh, and I've heard, I don't know anything about this movie. I was back when we were doing sneak preview, I was doing, we did a Wes Craven retrospective episode where I watched like all of his movies and we were going to rank them. And Caleb straight up told me like, stay away from that one. <laughs> like, just don't bother. Perfect. And when he, when he tells me a horror movie is shit, it's probably really, really bad. So oh. we're going to see how this goes. Well, that's perfect though, man, because now you have a reason, you know, it's like, it, it, you know, the Lord provided a way. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. Uh, good. Go. We got a good week coming up then. We got a little Halloween, a little, little Wes Craven and a little Bong Joon-ho. All right. This is fucking bonkers. Super fun. Having a blast. You know, this is a. Uh, all these shows are like just just they've become who they are now you know beyond the bats over 40 episodes in now oscar sunday we were getting close to 125 already film guys is well over 200 you know this is just this is just like what we do now and um yeah. have, having a blast so keep listening to us keep following us on uh twitter instagram facebook at film keep looking at our site we got reviews up all the time uh and keep watching movies we'll see you wednesday